Oh, welcome. Look, I'm just going to edit an image and just really, hopefully, I can just pass on, you know, some things I've learned over the years, really editing my images. And uh, this image here I'm going to process. Now, I've actually started to edit this image. I'm going to come back up to uh, custom and I'm going to just click default settings to bring this image back to straight out of camera so we can see this is a raw file and it was shot um, last year and it was mid-morning about quarter past 10 in the morning so look when i arrive at a scene i um i don't whip my camera out i kind of looking around because i'm looking for certain elements in my subject i'm looking for a good foreground especially shooting a wide angle lens i'm looking at a foreground to anchor my image and i'm looking at obviously light looking at maybe some leading lines and you can see my thinking here i remember walking off the track uh, coming and i was standing up on the left i could see the river so i knew the river was going to be a good leading line and yeah, obviously the waterfall so i remember making myself back down the track just walked under a little bridge and i uh, got myself a, just uh, on the side of this river. And this was quite a high flow river. It looks very small, but you'd, there's no way that I was going to walk in there. Um, it was very swift. So I have my um, so my foreground uh, here, and it was, uh, it was anchored, and then my leading line to the waterfall. Now I've got some beautiful light uh, coming down. It was come out from the, uh, from the right, coming filtering down into the trees. Now this waterfall was recessed back uh, so the direct, there was no really direct light um, on that waterfall. Now, when I compose my images, I'm always thinking, especially when I've, when I've taken my image, I look in the viewfinder and I'm thinking, well, the next time I see this is going to be in Lightroom. Am I happy with the image? Because it's no good taking an image and um, bring into Lightroom and go, that's not what I wanted. So try and you know, shoot purposeful when you're on location. Um, because nothing worse taking half a dozen photos and bringing them back and uh, especially if you have traveled and it's cost you some money uh, you really just want to take your time so getting to a location just leave your camera in the bag just you know walk around have a look look for look for um, some subject matter now over the years I can remember listening to a photographer many many years ago and he just um, I remember him saying he used to look at the Hudson School of Painters uh, they were a group of men and women back in the, I think it was the early 1800s. Uh, and he got a lot of inspiration uh, from looking at those painters. So I thought, well, this guy's a pretty good photographer. And so off I went and started to look at the Hudson School of Painters. So I'll just bring these up. And obviously painters have a license to paint what they want uh, they can paint light where they want they can put clouds in if it's cloudless but as photographers um, you know we're pretty limited push the button and what you've got is on your card now we can add clouds today we, we can do a lot of things we can use composite photography um, but just look at this image here we can see, we can learn a couple of things from here, which I've learned uh, by looking at these uh, Hudson School of Painters, is they always seem to um, have a lot of contrast in the foreground, or a lot of the painters have contrast or dark out into the light. They do have a leading line through here, which is always nice. So also they have fairly, a lot of the painters have fairly large objects in the scene. So this is a big tree, obviously. So from big out into small. So dark to light, big to small, okay, or high contrast to low contrast. Now, if you could just, you know, add one of those uh, elements to your photography, your landscape photography, your images will just, um, will just come up in, um, I think you'll enjoy your images more. So dark to light, big to small, or high contrast to low contrast. So I'll just pop back and just bring a couple of images that I've shot over the years. This was um, just recently in New Zealand. But you can see here my thought when I was walking around, some beautiful light, but I went from big, this big boulder, and it went from dark, 
high contrast to light. So dark to light, big to small. Okay, and there's some rocks going out there just to lead our eyes out to that mountain. So high contrast to low contrast, dark to light, or big to small. This one here was shot in Bali. So once again, I'm walking around, I'm just, it was an impressive waterfall, but I just couldn't get the competition. So I thought, okay, big to small. So I got really close within a couple of feet from this little waterfall. Um, so I got really close and so big to small. Uh, it was fairly cloudy. That actually, actually was actually raining actually off and on. So very low contrast. But look, the shadow down here, dark or darkish up here. It's not the same contrast. So dark to light or high contrast, even though I could have done some more shadow work, but uh, dark to light, big to small. Uh, shot in New Zealand and Mount Cook. So once again, very hazy, quite a low contrast subject, but once again, use the wide angle lens. So got reasonably close. So anchored the image, so fairly big out into small. So higher contrast to low contrast. So big to small, you could go, this black in here is not the same out here. And lucky, had a leading line. Okay, wide angle lens, big to small, dark to light. And some great leading lines, these rocks here pointing out to the distance. And when I shot my first images, I reviewed them in the viewfinder and I was too low. This rock here was cutting the horizon off, which didn't look right. So I just raised the tripod up a little bit, made sure there's some space to give it that depth that I needed. So big to small, high contrast to low contrast. And I, lucky I had some nice leading lines out there. Uh, Tarn a lot in Bali. Okay, dark to light. The wide angle lens and the vertical had some foreground. I anchored my foreground, got some middle ground, got some background. So dark to light, big to small. Once again, in the vertical, wide angle, so large, contrast, so dark. The light this dark down here there's no this contrast down here there's blacks there's no blacks up there the same as this so dark the soft or less contrast and this was lovely light coming over my right shoulder it was just um, brightening these um, this tussock up just leading me around to the lake so big to small now this was shot just this week once again, wide angle lens, very, very close to the water. Now this was uh, focus stacked. I think it was about three or four images because I was that close. So large to small, high con uh, contrast or high contrast to low contrast or dark to light and a leading line. I've got one more. This was the same location, just further down the creek. So once again, uh, focus stack, because I was really close, so I needed to anchor that uh, image. I used this fern, so really close, maybe three, 400 mil. Had to focus stack it. So you can see the contrast down below here. So dark to light. I did dodge, um, I just added a little bit of light through these ferns, just like a little S through there. I didn't dodge any of these, but just through here. And these trees here gave me a beautiful window to hold my eye through into the background. So big to small, high contrast down here to low contrast, and a nice leading line with these arches here. So hopefully that will just give you food for thought when you go out and put your wide angle lens on Anchor your image, big to small, high contrast, low contrast. So let's come in and look at this image here. So as I said, this uh, here, 
I'm going to hit develop mode now. I'm looking at this image and look, exposure's pretty good. Um, I certainly did not want to clip my highlights. My highlights, uh, no problem here. The water looks good. There's no clipping. Got a little bit of clipping in the shadow, but that's no problem. I'd rather have clipping in my shadow than clipping in my highlights. I always keep an eye on my histogram when I'm out. If I have to shoot two images, I'll shoot two images, but this was okay. So this image here, so I've got a nice leading line to the subject, but it's pretty well kind of evenly lit, okay? Which, um, I'm trying to think that day, I think we, it was cloudy just coming over and, um, and uh, just going away. We had to wait because there was some direct sunlight on the water. She'd just wait a few seconds. Some go high in the clouds. So I'm looking at this image and I'm thinking, okay, there's my main subject. I've got a nice leading line, but I need to darken down this foreground. I need uh, the viewer to really start um, focusing around here. So our eyes will naturally go from about here to here. So I'm thinking darking down the foreground. Now this sun, this was taken around about, I think it was 10 o'clock or quarter past 10 in the morning. So the light was coming up from the top here, coming down. You can see some light just hitting these uh, trees here. So really the light, I'm not too, I'm going to probably darken down the side here, darken down through here, darken the foreground. I'm going to add a little bit more light here. I think just adding a bit here, uh, maybe a vignette. So let's see how we go with this image. So let's come back to uh, color. So this is a raw file, so there's been no editing on it. So let's come in and I'm in my calibration tab. So let's just add some red saturation and just going, just scrolling back and forward. I'm looking at the image, looking at my water, looking at those greens and yellows. They look quite good. So I'm going to probably go about there come down to my green saturation push that green too much even though this is very lush just got a high rainfall area in bali and then i come to my blue tab and just see what that does so it's not changing it's a little bit of blue and get rid of that later so i'm just pushing those greens up and i'm pretty happy with that so let's come back to the basic tab and our temperature and tint look I think it looks pretty good actually I look Fuji does a great job this is the what did I shoot XT4 so uh, does a great job but look you can come in and you might want to go warmer or you might want to go cooler it's really depends where you want to go with your images but look I'm going to just double click that to bring it back to 5700 Kelvin and it's got plus 47 on that magenta um exposure look pretty happy with exposure i might just see my highlights i might come down and just bring that water down just a little bit more it's going to bring a bit more kind of texture back into that water just not too much maybe about there shadows i could open those up a little bit so i'm just doing little bits to the image i'm not doing anything uh, too crazy um, i don't touch my saturation or my vibrance so i'm coming down look i'm not going to add any texture clarity nothing no 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 color mixer look could come in and look i do like taking a little bit of blue out of that water just a tad and maybe a bit of aqua just have a look as yeah you probably can't see that on the video but it could come up because i'm in the saturation or the h uh, hue saturation luminance um we can see hue saturation luminance you can click all and all those panels will come up uh, come down but i just like working in um, one at a time so look let me just punch those greens up just a little bit more see what happens just and a bit of yellow it's not doing too much what you can do come into the illuminance and that just kind of brightens the saturated color that you um so I like your greens we could brighten those greens up if you want 
this to uh, add a bit more light because remember we're going to go from dark to light all right and i'll probably crop this image to a little bit here i've got some rubbish i can get rid of okay so great now detail look we can come in and uh radius down and i'm just going to hit the alt key Is coming so roughly know with this these Fuji files where I want to sit so that's about right masking I don't want to sharpen the water so I'm going to hit the alt key hold it down and just slide that so what's black here is not going to be sharpened what white is will be sharpened so roughly about here um 160 so that's the ISO base ISO for this camera so I'm not there's no noise uh, lens corrections are on all the time now transform like I do use the transform when I'm shooting at 10 mil so in the vertical or or the horizontal just gonna check something uh, so what I do is I'm gonna hit transform and I'm gonna come in and use the scale so I'm just gonna bring this scale back down so 96 percent is fine now but it's the aspect ratio that i'm going to do because i find with the wide angle shooting vertical or horizontal it just kind of stretches the image a little bit so what i do is i come in and i'm going to just pull this to the right to kind of bring the image back kind of roughly to where i feel it needs it so just you know plus 38 so if i do that i'll show you there so it was back to there so i'm just going to bring it in to, to about 33 all right and i'm happy so what i'm going to do now it's going to bring that into photoshop right okay that's just there now i'm just going to come in and flatten this image uh flatten here now i am using the tony kuiper uh, panels i um, use them gosh well over 10 years great panel just a lot of everything in photoshop is kind of in here it's uh just saves going you know trying to remember where things are it's uh you become one click instead of going through you know different things and looking for things and i do a um this uh, luminosity mask which i use a lot especially if i have to uh, you shoot two images and i've got a blender sky on or something I'll use the luminosity masks um all right so where are we so we are in photoshop so let's just duplicate that image and look in this light i'm really because as i said this is a raw file it's um still fairly flat so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just add some more light maybe through here just as it coming down it was around 10 o'clock the light was coming down so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create, come to my layers tab and just create a blank new layer. Okay, just blank, but I'm going to use a blending mode with a brush and a color. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change, um, let's go, let's start with hard light and let's just choose a brush and I'm going to come down to my color here. You've got a black and a white. Now if you just click that once, a color picker foreground color will come up or color picker tool will come up and all the hues are here all right so what i'm thinking is you know i want a fairly warm warmish color maybe mm. yep but i really want it really desaturated so i really want to come over here if i just click the corner there that's going to be virtually pure white I just want to add just a little just maybe there a little bit of color and my opacity i really want to come down to about 10 percent uh, every photo is different sometimes i'll choose 20 but let's start with 10 percent now you can use your numbers on your keyboard you know like two would be um 20 percent um and so forth seven and zero is a hundred percent um you're painting through that paint so let's go 10 percent now I'm on a hard light on the layer and what I want to do is just bring my brush size. I'm using my bracket key, my left bracket key and we could, I'm just thinking, we might could bring this off. Let's just start here. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm just going to click once and then I'm going to open up my brush and then I'm going to just keep a couple of clicks click it's going to come down just add a bit of light through there all right now I do have my opacity if I've gone thing I've gone too much I can just slide that to the left all right you can just build that up if you want that's hard light what I want to do, I'm going to add another new layer and I'm going to choose a soft light. Okay, so there's soft light. So if I go back to that layer two, that layer one, it will be hard light. Okay, so soft light. I'm going to come back to my color picker. Maybe it's going to warm that a little bit. Maybe there. And there. Let's bring my brush back down and click and just fill that up. Maybe. good all right I'm happy with that now we can um, you can name these if you want you can name this you know hard light soft light but what I like to do is just hit hold the shift key down and click on that lower one so you've chosen both of them and just to tidy things up we can come and just put this into a group hit the group and those two files are now in the group and the benefit of having it in a group we can add a mask to this group all right so we can do kind of hit Kind of, you know, one stone does two things. So we can come in and look. I'm just looking at the image, and this waterfall was recessed in a little bit. So, but I've bled a little bit of light over the waterfall. So I want to add a little, bit, you know, keep that um, off there. So we can come in and choose a mask. Just click that, it'll put a white mask on that group. Now, with black paint, you can see black is a foreground color, which is good. We can go back to our brush you hit the B key brackets make it smaller we can zoom in and I just want to we're at 10% let's go 50% I just want to take that off that water there I just want that light to come down because as I said this waterfall was recessed behind um, I don't know, this curtain of forest here all right and we can just all right. So what I'd like to do is if you hold the Alt key down and hit the background layer, the like on, you'll turn everything above it so you can kind of see kind of what you've done. If it's good enough or you want to redo it. But I'm pretty happy with that. So I've got some nice bit of light here. So next thing I do, I want to bring this foreground down. Okay. So let's, why don't we just put this on a new layer? So this is everything I've done is now in this pixel layer. Now, if you don't have the Tony Kuipers, I've got to remember how to do it. I think it's um, Alt, Control, Shift, and E on a PC. So I'm not too sure what that would be on a Mac. It's probably Alt. Yeah, I'm not too sure what the Mac is. So that will just put all that work done on this pixel layer. So what we can do, look... Um, we could go into Adobe Camera Raw. Now, Adobe Camera Raw can be found up in its filters and Camera Raw filter. If I do have it uh, here, so I just got to go click onto Adobe Camera Raw. And if you hit M, that will bring the mask mode up. Now, mask mode can be found on the right side with that circle dotted line. If you click that, that will bring your mask functions up. Once again, this is very straightforward. I'm just going to go straight to my brush. I'm going to drop my light or my exposure. Once again, this is a guess, but I roughly think around about one. Um, yeah, one and a half or just under one and a half. Um, you can place probably stops of light. Let's do a bigger brush and let's just see where this goes. So I'm just, just going to darken down that. Okay. So you're the painter. We could hit the erase button if we want to just come back maybe just bring that um, yeah back to your brush I just I 
as I said, it's trial and error. Just want to bring this back. And you can see the mask up here. If you lift anything, you can see it. So let's go back. And I'm going to drop that exposure. Not as much. Okay, let's get a bigger brush about there. And I think that's a lot better. Don't want to go too far. Just going up there, knock that off. All right, I think that's a lot better. All right, so we can go back into your edit mode here. That will just take us straight back and because we're still in camera raw it gives us all our features you know that calibration if you want to come back and change some color your temperature if you want to change it uh, exposure you can come and just look at it you can drop maybe that's looking good let's click ok and come back into Photoshop. All right, so let's just hit the Alt key, go back to the background, turn the eyeball on and off. So that's the start when we brought it in from Lightroom. Okay. Right, so now I really want to bring the viewer's eye to the subject. So light, waterfall, and this water here. So what I can do just thinking we could drop the exposure down so we could look you can name this layer if you want to but we're going to create another layer and we're going to why don't we just use a use an adjustment uh could you let's go brightness contrast this looks all i'm doing is dropping the exposure really dropping the brightness down okay so what i'm really looking for I'm just looking at the outsides here so what we're going to do, I'm going to bring back uh, the light. So I'm just there, what's that, 47. And with a black brush, <clears throat> fairly large brush, about there at 40%. I'm just going to paint where I want the viewer to look. Because remember, the viewer eyes will always go from dark to light. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So it's like a natural vignette, you know, but you're just painting where you want that light. So as the painters of old, those that paintbrush, they could add light where they wanted and they could add darken uh, where they wanted just to pull that viewer uh, eye into the subject so okay so let's go right down the bottom hit the alt key hold it down and let's go there to there there to there all right all right, so look, why don't we just, this is bothering me over here. Let's get rid of, let's put this on a layer. So, so pixel layer and let's just get rid of this. It's bothering me. And this is tough to do it. There's a bit of rubbish there. You know, see that stick. You'd go around and just, you know, check everything. There's a bit of um, whatever that is down here. I don't know what that is. Nice or rock, I think. So you can come in maybe just see what that does. See if it makes, um, yeah, perfect. All right, so what I'll do, I'll just sit on this image. I'll probably go away now, have a coffee, don't watch a bit of TV, um, you know, come back and view it a bit later. Um, but yeah, and sometimes when you come back for the fresh eyes, you might want to do a little bit more work on it. So hopefully that just gives you, you know, something to think about so if you can incorporate one or two of those things into your images when you shoot you know big to small 
high contrast to low contrast. There's another thing that I do use is uh, Nick. Nick software. So what I do is kind of got my favorites. Um, so I'll actually come up to my pro contrast straight away and over on the right side, uh, correct color cast. So sometimes when you're working on an image, especially in the beginning, if you're starting, it's hard to see a um, color contrast. It could be too green or it could be blue, purple. Uh, so I'll just slide this back and forward and there's really nothing that I can see. So you do can come proficient um, after a while uh, editing, but this is a good thing to just, yeah, and you'll see it could be too green or too blue, but I'm happy with that. Uh, correct contrast. Look, sometimes I will come in and just look at it. Maybe you can play with that. Dynamic contrast. Uh, it does work for some images. This one's going to just blow it out too much. It's going to really bright that up, which I don't want and shadows i will use shadows sometimes to bring that less contrast or that uh, moody look or that less contrasty look so if i come in and just slide that shadow slider all the way to the right you can see the whole image has gone flat what it does it adds less contrast to the back of the image so what you can do is just slide that all the way come right into the bottom and hit brush and what that does will take us back to Light uh, Photoshop and it'll automatically put a black layer mask on the image. So all that work that I've just done with that softening that image is there, but I can actually paint that in where I want it. We're at, uh, let's go 100%. And let's just paint that in. So it's really adding like a mist, you know, all that water's throwing up mist and it's creating less contrast so high contrast low contrast just adding mood to your images all right let's go down the bottom hit the alt key so where we started where we brought that in from lightroom and then we've been building the image up big to small dark to light good nice leading line so hopefully this helps somebody with their images. Uh, maybe you've got some images you can work on now and you can bring those uh, to what you really uh, want. So thanks for watching.